This week, Sudan's military overthrew its government, sparking civilian protests against the country's latest coup d'etat. Last Monday, General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan launched an uprising against Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok, crippling the democratic transition that has been in place since 2019. After this week's coup, international support for Sudan has rapidly declined. The U.S. withheld a $700 million economic assistance package, and the EU is considering similar measures. The World Bank also announced the freezing of $2 billion in aid, and the African Union has suspended Sudan's membership. Although the Gulf countries and Egypt supported Sudan after the 2019 coup, which was perpetrated by the same generals, their continued backing is not enough to compensate for the loss of Western aid. In the short term, expect the international community to continue negotiating with Sudan's allies to pressure the military junta to return to civilian rule. However, the extremely volatile country is unlikely to reach a stable path to democracy anytime soon. On Wednesday, Iran's foreign ministry hosted a conference with these Asian nations in Tehran to discuss the situation in Afghanistan. The meeting focused on ways to pressure the Taliban, a near-exclusively Pashtun group, to include ethnic and religious minorities in its government. The Taliban's previous regime in the 1990s was marked by repression of and conflict with minorities, sending large numbers of refugees to neighboring countries. Now, the cash-strapped Taliban is in a bind. It must exercise tolerance to reopen commercial relations with its neighbors and access billions of dollars in frozen assets abroad. However, doing so risks more hardliners joining the ISIS-K insurgency against the Taliban government. But in the long term, the Taliban is unlikely to make any meaningful gestures towards real inclusion. All girls will be allowed to go to school and women can go to work once our government comes up with new regulations to provide them with a proper environment, he says. ISIS-K is too significant of a threat, and the U.S. is unlikely to release frozen assets regardless of the Taliban's policy. Moreover, Iran cannot afford to pressure the Taliban with sanctions as it relies on revenue from selling fuel to Afghanistan. Leaders from the G20 convened in Rome on Friday for an in-person two-day summit. At the top of the agenda was the global economic recovery from COVID-19, boosting vaccination rates, the climate crisis, and supply chain issues which have captured headlines in recent weeks. G20 leaders also discussed global security issues such as the ongoing Afghan crisis and U.S. counterterrorism operations in Africa's Sahel region. Crucially, the G20 leaders endorsed a global tax rate of 15% for major companies, aiming to begin enforcing the law starting in 2023. The global tax rate is meant to discourage large companies from relocating to global tax havens and instead stimulate the home country's economies. The leaders also hope to set in place a vaccination plan to achieve 70% global vaccination rates by mid-2022. These measures will likely jumpstart individual large economies, but hurt small ones that cannot afford large quantities of vaccines. Furthermore, tax haven countries will likely face economic difficulties as corporations may relocate under the new measures.